What happens when an author's imagination runs just a little bit wild? Stay tuned and I'll tell you. Okay, so I was scanning Facebook a couple years ago and this young woman said something about her seven Christmas trees. And I went, and she made a comment, you know, that, you know, she was obsessed. And I was like, so you have a seven tree obsession. And it just clicked in my head. I really loved the idea of this seven tree obsession. And it kind of snowballed from there. Actually, to be honest, I was like, ooh, seven trees, that sounds fun, because I love Christmas. But my brain couldn't get past the um, idea of a seven tree obsession. And that kind of snowballed. And it, in 2016, I was, I was part of the Christmas lights collection and we each wrote novellas about, they were supposed to be about 40,000 words and mine went to about 43. <clears throat> I have problems with limitations. Um, but what, what I wanted to do was do something with that seven tree obsession. And so I tried to think about, you know, what kind of person might have seven trees? And I, I decided to just really exaggerate it all. I mean, let's, let's go all out in this little novella, right? And so I came up with a woman with seven trees, one for each one of her cats. And I called it Christmas stockings. And if you'll notice, yeah, it's spelled a little differently. Um, and the tagline of the book is Christmas stockings. Who knew Christmas time could feel so sinister. And it was a whole lot of fun to write. Um, I can't tell you how much fun I had with this book. I wrote this book, well, the original, I wrote it in 10 days. 42,000 words, I think it was then. 10 days um, in July for Camp NaNoWriMo. And then, um, but there was one scene in this book that just wasn't as funny. I mean, if you listen to me in the, um, audio notes that I made, you know, just driving around plotting the book out. I'm not kidding you. I was cracking up so hard. I don't remember if it was this one or front window, the audio notes that I was laughing so hard I had to pull over on the freeway because it wasn't safe for me to drive. The ideas that I was coming up with, I was just rolling. And I think that might have been front window, but it, it could have been this one. I was plotting them both at the same time. It <laughs> would be really funny is I mean, you're trying to figure out who the stalker is and what horrible deeds and whatnot that um, he wants to do. And instead, <laughs> oh my goodness, oh my goodness, this is great. <laughs> Can you imagine? She's just like, I can't believe this guy. And, you know, and she's just, and so she picks up the cat, she doesn't get it, she still doesn't get it. She's like, come on, he's still gonna hurt you. <laughs> I can just see you going, ah. And, yeah. And so, um, I read this, and it was a great scene, it was fun, I and mean, it was really cool, and I was, but it just, it, there was something missing. And so I gave it to my horror writer friend because that's what you want to do when you're doing, you know, Christian fiction comedy. You give it to the horror writer and you say, why isn't this funny? <laughs> but it worked great because Clark, on top of just being a really intelligent guy, and, you know, he, he has like a sixth sense for where you might want to take a story. He knows what questions to ask to get you going and get you engaged, right? Um, he's also very sensitive, a very... Um, caring individual and so I knew he would have some great insight and he did it was the second time he'd done this to me the first time was with Mad Madeline Madeline one sweet I knew he made me cut the book in half and I had to start all over again <sighs> 
And he was right. It was a much better book for doing it. Book two was a much better book for doing it. And so, I mean, he was right. So when he said, you know, this is why I don't think it's funny, I was listening. And what he said was, I feel sorry for the guy. I mean, this is the villain. And he feels sorry for the villain. He's like, it's from his perspective. And so you make me feel sorry for him. And so it's not funny because I feel sorry for him. If I saw it from the main character's perspective, because she um, is seeing it all apart from this person's emotions, it would be really funny. And I went, oh, okay. And so I rewrote the entire scene it got about another thousand words <laughs> and it was almost as funny as I imagined. I think it's one of those scenes that when, if you actually saw it, it would be even better, but Hey, I did what I could do and it, I'm really very happy with it. Um, I love the characters in here. As a matter of fact, I fell in love with the character of one of her neighbors so much that I had another, I had other stuff I was supposed to be doing. When I finished it um, in, and then in November for Nano, I was like, that's it. I'm writing that book instead. And the other book, I'll talk about it more later, it was New Year's Revolutions. Christmas stockings, New Year's Revolutions. And I started writing in November and I was like, you know what, this is crazy. New Year's is coming up. I need to release this for New Year's. And so I put myself on a crazy deadline. I went absolutely nuts and I wrote the book, had it edited, did all the rewrites and all the re-edits and everything and had it uploaded three days before New Year's. Talk about insane. Oh, remember that there's that whole Christmas in, you know, there's, there's Thanksgiving in November and then that whole Christmas in, um, December thing. And, oh yeah, when we were out of town when all of this was happening and, oh, that's when my husband fell 15 feet out of a hot tub all that time. Yeah. What was I not thinking? I don't know, but you know what? I had a blast and I can't wait to tell you about that book, but it all sparked from this one and it all sparked from wanting to show one of those characters in here from a t his fam his vantage point and so I had so much fun with it um, there are seven cats in this book seven cats um, I'm not a cat person we now have a, a cat um, his name well her name its name this cat has done a gender reassignment on us <clears throat> He went into heat, and so he became a she. Um, its name is Bleach. I don't capitalize its name. Um, I consider Bleach to be just, yeah, I'm not going to dignify that with a capital letter. So uh, we, I consider Bleach the E.E. E. Cummings of cats, you know, lowercase Bleach, yeah. So I had, you know, little antics that I, I watched this cat do and I, you know, some of them got in here um, highly exaggerated because, you know, you got to have fun with it. Um, but this book, it, it's just a light hearted comedic um, look at the inside of a crazy cat lady's life at Christmas time. And what happens when someone upsets all of that because, um, well, that someone is just not a nice person. Christmas stockings. It's short and sweet. Only, it's about half the length of my other books. Really super fun, quick read. Yeah, it's a Christmas book, but who says you can't read Christmas books any time of the year, right? I think most people will like it. Just a hint of a mystery, nothing, you know, earth shattering, nothing too scary. There's nothing horribly brutal in it. Okay, there's nothing brutal in it, but it it sounded better to put it that way. Come on, Christmas stockings. I gotta make it sound creepy, right? No, just kidding. So anywho, um, Christmas stockings. Funny story about the cover. So I made this cover. 
and I tried to make other ones and um, I just just didn't like them and so I sent the cover to Ashley knowing she wouldn't like it and she didn't she was like can't you put basically can't, Ashley wanted a pretty lady pretty young lady on the cover and I'm like the woman is middle-aged and she looks like Rosie the Riveter okay mm -mm. and she was just like can't you put some, isn't there a neighbor girl or something we can put on the cover? And I'm like, no. I mean, she's right, okay? I know. I always say, why do there have to be people on the cover? I don't want people. Well, you know what? The reason that there have to be people on the cover is because most people are drawn to people. We're humans. We're drawn to other humans. Books with people on the cover get picked up twice as often as books that don't. You can argue it all you want, but that's just the way it is. And so, you know, I understood why she wanted it, but yeah, it just, there wasn't any way to do it. And so I finally decided, well, she's going to have to live with it. I did that one other time, Decluttering Junkie, check that book chat out, but um, I was like, eh, what can I do? And then, <laughs> too funny, I got a message yeah, about six months later and she's like, yeah, it kind of grew on me. It's one of my favorites now. And I was like, score! Still got to convince her that decluttering junkie isn't as horrible as she thinks. But I don't think it's going to work. Anywho, Christmas stockings. Short little, quick little read. See? Nothing, nothing scary. Anybody can get through it in no time. And um, check me next week and I'll tell you more about Wendy's story and what happened afterwards. You <laughs> have a great week.